Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to study the history of anatomy and the levels of organization. Definition. Anatomy. To cut open. It is the study of the structure of the body, either regionally or systematically. Physiology is a branch of biology that deals with the function of organs and organ systems. History of anatomy. It probably began with the examinations of human sacrifices and animal sacrifices. You tended to pull out certain organs and they had to observe them and look at them or look at the severed head. It was first documented by the Egyptians in 1600 BC. They had this anatomical papyrus that actually showed where certain organs were and even went into detail about blood vessels. Hippocrates was a Greek physician who studied anatomy and speculated on physiology, so he could only guess. He is known as the father of anatomy, and his texts revealed an in-depth understanding of the molecular, or excuse me, the muscular and the skeletal system, along with other specific organs such as the kidneys and the heart. You may have heard of the Hippocratic Oath. Well, many of Hippocrates' ideas were put into this Hippocratic Oath that are taken by doctors at graduation. Some of the ideas were that sickness is not a divine punishment. Medicine should be ethical and patient confidentiality. Alinius Galeonus, also known as Galen, was a 2nd century AD scientist who compiled anatomical studies from earlier writers. He also performed his own vivisection, or live dissection, on animals, specifically dogs. His drawings and his gatherings of other information became the surgical textbook that was used for the next 1500 years. He was also the authority on wounds and how they healed. Aristotle loved to investigate and compare animal form, structure, development, physiology, behavior, and ecology in order to learn how and why they lived as they do. He was regarded as the founder of comparative anatomy. He studied from the Hippocratic Corpus, which was a collection of writings on medicine and disease. During the medieval times when Rome fell, little was done to advance the studies of anatomy and physiology. Desecrations of bodies was taboo, and cadavers were no longer used in the research. Only in the 16th century did we begin to really compile extensive drawings of dissections of executed cadavers and other information. We discovered the physiology of the circulatory system. Leonardo da Vinci was an Italian Renaissance polymath, which meant he studied a lot of different things. Some things that he studied, such as artists, or art, painting, and anatomy, he combined into the idea of topographic anatomy, which are drawings of the muscles, tendons, and other visible anatomical features. He was given permission, since he was such a great artist, to do specific dissections in a Florence hospital. Unfortunately, he died right before he was gathering all of his works, and his works were not published for many years after his death. In the 17th and 18th centuries, few dissections were allowed, and only certain scientists were allowed to do them. Funny enough, tickets were sold to others wishing to see and draw the dissected body. Doctors literally traveled from dissection to dissection. In the 19th century, we began to study developmental anatomy. England was the center of the anatomical research. The Anatomy Act of 1832 provided adequate supply of corpses for us to use in research. And Gray's Anatomy was first published in 1858 for those traveling doctors to use. Modern anatomy has come a very long way and we have been able to use new technology to provide further understanding of both structure and function of organs and organ systems. We use things as such as CAT scans, x-rays, genetic testing, and MRIs to actually find out more about the structure and function. Future anatomy, when we've looked into the health-related studies, are now being centered around molecular biology. 
We are now looking at genetics and the molecular indicators to show disease or to show correlations of disease. New assays are being conducted more in vitro, which is in the laboratory, versus in vivo, which is in living things. When looking at the levels of organization, we start from the smallest and work our way up. Each uh, level comes and combines together to form the next level up. So the atom is the most basic unit that anything can be broken down to and still exhibit its own characteristics. We know these as the elements. Well, the elegance, the elements or atoms come together to form molecules. They work together collectively to form a molecule, such as protein, carbohydrates, and lipids. These molecules work together collectively to form a cell. The cells collectively work together to form tissues. Tissues work together to form organs. Organs work together to form organ systems. And organ systems function together to form an organism. Well, that's all I have for you today. So, hello kitty says bye now.